I get to eat chocolate souffle every day. The worst thing about this is that I've eaten chocolate souffle every day. <laughs> making a lot of giant things lately and I decided why not make my all-time favorite dessert giant and that is a chocolate souffle. If only my favorite dessert was something a little bit easier. People always say what came first the chicken or the egg. In this case it's the egg. With any souffle the main ingredient is the egg. You have to separate your eggs into yolks and whites. I like to crack my eggs on the surface of the table as opposed to like the bowl because you'll get less like shardage. <laughs> Obviously this is giant so I'm gonna be using a lot of eggs. I'm gonna use this whole carton so I need 12 egg whites and then six egg yolks. It's so much easier to use your hands to separate your yolks, so you just wanna be really careful not to get any yolk in your white because it will affect the way your egg whites whip up. I want 16 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. Each bar is two ounces, therefore I need eight. I'm gonna chop up my chocolate. It doesn't have to be pretty because we're gonna melt it all down, but you don't wanna just melt down full bars of chocolate. That would have been bad. So before I even start, I need to preheat and prepare my oven. It's the first time I've ever remembered to preheat my oven. But it's important because if it's not ready to go, once you finish making your souffles, they may deflate. And that's the biggest risk you run with making a souffle. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of a makeshift double boiler. I just have a little bit of water going at medium heat. And this will just heat up the chocolate much more gently than a direct heat will. And with that, I'm adding four tablespoons tablespoons of unsalted butter. Honestly, we could stop here and it would be delicious. <laughs> butter and chocolate. My butter has melted down, so I'm just gonna take this off the heat. Careful, because it is hot. I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of vanilla. Before we move on to the next step, we are going to prep our giant souffle dish. Coating your dish with this butter and sugar will help your souffle not stick to the edges and also it supposedly allows it to rise from the dish, which is a very important part of a souffle. <laughs> I'm going to whip up my egg yolks with a fourth of a cup of sugar. I wish I used a hand mixer. <laughs> I'm going to add this to our chocolate. When you're folding, you wanna scrape the bottom of the bowl and bring it to the top, just to make sure we get kind of an even fold, an even mix. So now I'm just gonna set this aside. It can hang out while we move on to our egg whites. Which, by the way, I am definitely going to be using a hand mixer for. <laughs> So of course, a classic souffle is really airy and light and kind of cloud-like. So it's really important to get them to stiff peaks and incorporate lots of air into it. If not, your souffles won't rise. So now that my egg whites have turned opaque and are leaving some trails, I'm gonna start gradually adding a half a cup of sugar. Look how beautiful that is. Yes, we've made it. So we're bringing back our base and now we're gonna mix the two together. I'm gonna start by lightening the base this means putting about a half a cup of our egg whites into the chocolate mixture. When you lighten the base, it just makes it easier to add the rest of the egg whites without deflating it too much. Again with this arm workout too, man. Forget the gym, just make a souffle. <laughs> I have my prepared dish and I'm just going to get this batter in here. Woo! It looks really nice and airy, so that's good. I'm gonna use a offset spatula to even out this top. And lastly, I'm going to run my thumb around the edge to create kind of like a little border around the souffle. And this will also help it to rise nicely. Into the oven she goes. This is always the most nerve wracking part, to opening the oven. Whoa, okay. Well, it's risen. I'm just gonna call our head of culinary, Claire King, and see what she thinks. Hi, Claire. I know you're up to no good. <laughs> so, it is a souffle. It has a crack. I don't know if that's like okay. So, I'm pretty sure that means that you're, you made like a roux, I'm assuming, like kind of like a panade. I didn't do any, a flour. So, it makes me think that your panade is too loose. It has um, a big crack in it. I'm just. How many times have you done this? 
This is our first one. Oh, all right, not too bad. Yeah, right? Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, it's day two. I'm feeling pretty confident because yesterday our test went really well considering the large crack in the top of the souffle. Now I have a couple of theories as to why that happened. One theory is that I overfilled the dish and the other theory is that there's too much moisture in my batter and not enough stability. The first theory is easier to remedy, so I'm going to try to do that first. I made a double recipe yesterday and I still have batter left over. Over. So I'm actually just going to do a single souffle recipe. I'm feeling good today because really our only fault yesterday was the crack in the top. <laughs> fault. That's a dumb joke. <laughs> I'm a little worried because it is pretty low. I don't know if like I should be hitting a little higher than this. But you don't know until you try, right? <laughs> All right. So it's not perfect. I definitely underfilled the dish this time. Still have a pretty big crack in the top of my souffle. I'm gonna try baking it next time with a water bath because it will gradually raise the heat rather than like shocking it in the oven. And that might be causing the San Andreas fault. <laughs> okay, I've made the same exact batter for the third time. Hopefully, third time is a charm. I also did one and a half batches because the first time we made too much. The second time, we made too little. Hopefully the third time, we meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so now I'm going to make my water bath. You can just take a pan that's a little bit deeper and before we put it in the oven, we're gonna fill it, not quite halfway up, with some hot water. Now I'm going to stick this in the oven very carefully. Don't be fooled by my smile. <laughs> we have way less crackage, which is good, but not enough lift. Unfortunately, third time was not the charm. <laughs> All right, so I did a little bit of thinking. Water bath is definitely not the right way to go for this. For a souffle, it's really important to get that intense heat in order for your souffle to actually rise. So that's why <laughs> our souffle fell flat. Today, I'm gonna to be switching up my method a little bit. I'm going to be making a chocolate pastry cream and use that for my base. I'm gonna start by scalding my milk. I don't wanna bring this to a boil, so I'm gonna watch it. I'll actually watch it this time. <laughs> you don't want to burn your table, so I have a little towel down. Now I'm gonna add in 12 ounces of my chocolate. Okay, so we've got our chocolate milk. <laughs> Before I add the chocolate, I'm gonna mix together these egg yolks, some sugar, some flour, a little bit of salt, and vanilla. So I'm gonna add just a half a cup of our hot chocolate milk mixture into our egg yolks. You don't wanna just mix it all together right off the bat because we have eggs in here and they will cook. So tempering is just a way to kind of slowly bring up the heat and make sure everything mixes thoroughly. And we're gonna heat this all up. Woo! It's thick. <laughs> So I transferred my pastry cream to a bowl. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and I'm gonna press it down to the surface. And now we will put it in the fridge. All right, time to whip our egg whites. We are almost at the end. I can almost taste that giant chocolate souffle. I know the taste well by now. So egg whites, cream of tartar. This part is all the same. All right, time to add my sugar. Luckily, I'm naturally very loud. <laughs> Yum, 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 this looks so good. From now on, the technique we're doing is exactly the same. So again, my dish is completely prepared and the batter is actually like perfectly incorporated. I'm not seeing any white streaks or really dark parts, so that's a good sign. So I preheated my oven to 400 degrees. Right before I put my souffle in, I turned the temperature down to 375, just so my souffle has that really intense initial heat in order for it to rise. We're gonna be baking it for about 40 to 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, it looks awesome! Wow, it looks so good. So one of the really difficult parts about a souffle is telling when it's actually done. A lot of people are always so scared about souffles falling, but naturally, once you take your souffle out of the oven, it's going to eventually deflate. But again, souffle is a dessert you're gonna wanna serve immediately. Timing is everything here, people. So this is my favorite dessert. I wanna serve it the way I like to eat it, and that's with whipped cream. Also another great way to cover up anything you're trying to hide. <laughs> Woo! It looks so good, it looks so good. Oh my God, it's so good. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, that was a little messy, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, I did it, finally. Giant 
chocolate souffle, done. Cracked a lot of eggs, cracked a lot of souffles. If I learned anything, it's that I fall, you fall, <laughs> souffles, they fall. But they're delicious and you should make them and you should eat them. I don't have a spoon, but I'm gonna take this home or something. <laughs>